Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got quite a few things to go over for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. We have a newer, fully updated Pokedex from the most recent leaks, etc. and stuff from Riddler Coup in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. We also have another leak breakdown to go over, more really good theories about Generation 9 Legendaries, loads of stuff to cover in today's video. So if you're excited for it, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we mention in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, this is the updated Pokedex image for Generation 9 created by Yoriden. So again, massive shout out to them. We went over this in a recent video, but now there has been even more updates and stuff to it. Um, so again, that's just because of what Koo's leaked and also what Koo has like replied to people with, etc. Uh, like on the last one, obviously we didn't have the Wigglytuff line, but now that has clearly been um, posted on it now. So yeah, Charizard line there, Raichu line, Wigglytuff line now. Uh, obviously, if it's got like a little R next to it, that means it's Riddler Koo that said that that Pokemon's in the game. Basically confirms that it is in the game because Riddler Koo has, you know, never been wrong and he clearly knows things about the game um so yeah just because it has like a little r there it doesn't mean that you know it's definitely not happening it, it means it most likely is um obviously we've got the venonet line the meowth line which could also bring for circa into the game psyduck the tentacruel line the magnemite line the shelter line the gengar line and then all the evolutions just because riddler Koo has replied to a tweet before that was saying you know is eevee and evolutions in generation 9 and he just said yeah so basically confirms that all the evolutions are in the game doesn't mean that we're going to get a new evolution because he obviously hasn't replied to anything about that. We'll have to wait and see if we're getting a new Generation 9 evolution. Anyway, in Johto, uh, we obviously had the Ampharos line, the Jumpluff line, uh, the Quagsire line. But that, I mean, that's still kind of up for debate because we, we're very heavily focused on the idea that Wooper's going to get a regional form. But that regional form, Wooper, might get a new evolution and Quagsire might not be in the game. Um, so again, we'll have to wait and see for that. Girafferig, though, uh, we have Dunsparce in the game with potentially getting a new evolution. Very, very lightly at this point, but again, that's just from what Riliku said. Uh, the Quillfish line, the Sneasel line, and the Tyranitar line. Uh, Gen 3, nothing's really changed. Pelipper, Altarius, Viper, and um, the, uh, what do you call it, Salamence line. Again, because Zangoose is there, could mean that, uh, no, because the Viper is there, could mean that Zangoose is there as well, but just because they're polar opposites doesn't necessarily mean they're both going to be in the game. Um, Gen 4, we have Staraptor, Vespaquen, Drifblim, and Lucario lines. Again, nothing's changed there. Uh, for Gen 5, Lilligan, Hisuian Zoroark is in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet through Pokemon Home. We can't find Hisuian Zoroark in the game. It's only tradable via Pokemon Home. We don't know if normal Unovian um, Zoro and Zoroark are going to be in the game. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we have Cryagonal there as well. From Gen 6, uh, we have the Talonflame line, the, um, what do we call it, the, uh, the Floette line. Again, Go-Go been confirmed by Riddler Koo, and then we obviously have the Kloitzer line. Uh, in Gen 7, we have Marini, we have um, Serena, and again, I keep forgetting this Pokemon's name, and it's really annoying because I did the exact same thing on the last video because I remember getting it wrong. Um, but anyway, you can see what's clearly on the screen. And then Gen 8, obviously, uh, the Tutel line, uh, the Rolicoli line, and Stonjourner. So these are all the updated like riddles and leaks and stuff like that. So obviously the new bug Pokemon, which could be either Snubble, Buffle, and Tauros, or Miltank, most likely going to be Tauros though. Uh, we have a three new bug Pokemon, um, which again, we don't know what they are, but that has been recently revealed by Riddler Koo. Again, it could be four, but it most likely is going to be three. Uh, and then we have this potential new Diglett Pokemon as well. Could be a regional form, could be a new evolution of it, we're not too sure. And then these are all also Pokemon that could at some point be in the game just due to like uh, riddles and stuff and unclear uh, Pokedex slots. So that's obviously either the Diglett line or the Sandslash line. Uh, we have the uh, Arcanine line or the Mankey line. Uh, obviously a couple of Generation uh, 8 evolutions from Ursaring and um, what do you call it? Stantler. Uh, we have the Teddy Ursa line there. Um, and then of course Welmer, Skitty. Uh, we have the Hydreigon line, the Generation 6 starters, and then Vivian and stuff like that. Again, just from Riddles and stuff like that. Uh, we have obviously all the Pokemon from Generation 8's um, Legends Arceus. Again, all of these could be in the game. Because Hisuian Zoroark is available, we don't know how many other um, Hisuian Pokemon are also going to be available in the game. And then again, we've got the starters here, which obviously finish on Grass Dark, Fire Ghost, and Water Fighting. We have Lechonk's evolution. Uh, Paul Me apparently getting an evolution. Smoliv apparently getting an evolution. Could be um, 
version dependent, uh, version exclusive could, could be gender dependent. Uh, we have Koraiden and Maraiden. Uh, we have the Japanese bug we know about. J uh, we have a fish as well that we know about. And then a couple of um, kind of waifu Pokemon, whatever you want to call them. Dunsparce Evolution, the coin Pokemon, and then the Wooper Evolution as well. So again, uh, massive shout out to Yoriden for obviously creating this Pokedex. But that is the latest updated Pokedex for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet going through all leaks, everything like that. So massive shout out to Yoriden there. The next thing I wanted to go over this with was this tweet by Light, who says, uh, what is this? They are in both the trailers, any ideas? So they're referencing this kind of blue sort of uh, machine-like um, thing over here in the corner. As you can see, they are in both trailers. So something that is quite prominent in the games does clearly pop up quite a bit. And uh, we actually have Kayla's capsules, uh, which has got a really good idea about what it could be. So the first pick looks different from the other two, in my opinion. I think the first pick is where we can buy experience candies similar to Pokemon at Legends Arceus. Um, so yeah, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, obviously you could buy these XP candies. And I think that that is just going to be the norm now in Pokemon. It's an easy way to level up Pokemon because obviously way back when you could only use rare candies and normal experience levels and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, you could use Lucky Eggs, etc. But it just took ages. Um, and now with XP candies that you can buy, it just makes leveling up Pokemon so much easier, if you, especially if you're trying to get like competitive Pokemon. Gen 9, like Scarlet and Violet, are going to be the new competitive games. Like It's still Sword and Shield at the moment because Legends Arceus doesn't have online battling. And then BDSP, well, we all know what BDSP is like. So um, yeah, Sword and Shield is still the main hub of competitive, which will move over to Gen 9 when the games come out. So I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of different ways to easily obtain natures, abilities, uh, EVs, IVs, everything like that, and XP candies are also very useful for leveling up. So, could be uh, a new gameplay. Well, I say a new gameplay feature. Could be a returning new gameplay feature for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and it could be an XP candy um, or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. But massive shout out to Light and Kayla's Capsules for obviously um, kind of seeing those. The next thing we're going to be going over is just a massive breakdown of you know all the stuff that we've seen so far uh, from the past week. So Soul Silver are saying potential spoilers. Had good luck cracking Ku's riddles. Here's a list of the most recent. So probably bipedal waifu Sprigatito evolution. So a little bit about the starters there. Um, again, we don't know what the designs are really going to look like. Ku's just said that Quaxley's got the best one. Sprigatito's is like a waifu kind of Pokemon. And we've not really heard anything on Fue Coco's apart from like the fact that it could be one of those four things that he kind of um, dropped earlier on in the week. But again, we're going to find a lot more out about Fue Coco on the 30th of June because Ridliku has come out and said that. And then also he says that we're getting a coin object mon probably evolves by collecting many coins to release a go slash deal type mic treasure object mon. So this whole collecting thing uh, could be very similar to having to collect the Zygarde cells in Gen 7. Yeah, Gen 7. Um, or collecting the Wisps for um, Spiritomb in Generation 8's Legends Arceus. And then Wooper, new regional evolution. So again, we... I mean, does that mean that Quagsire is not going to be in the game? We don't know, but it looks like Wooper is getting a new regional evolution. And then at least four new waifu mon with less than four husband mons. And then three to four new bug lines, which one of them is going to be a Japanese style bug. One could be a dung beetle, one could be a stink bug. And then fourth, we really don't know. Working on a bigger list of all his riddles and my answers to them coming soon. These are just my educated guesses. I could easily be wrong but, uh, about something. So yeah could very well be uh this is like the latest kind of information this is just kind of like the best um like riddle breakdown kind of list that we've had from from the past week because obviously he has dropped quite a few things this week he obviously dropped the coin thing he dropped the the whooper thing he dropped the bug thing he dropped the fue coco kind of mini leak thing so yeah that's all that finishing things off we have a really really good theory by eduardo uh it was quote retweeted by soul silver i was saying scary accurate in my opinion i would have to keep a, like i'd like to keep an eye on this um so eduardo really really good theories in the community uh a lot of people don't really know uh often but yeah really really good theories in the community and he's basically saying my personal bet for the eighth legendary is still something more akin to the rainbow angel with a solar motif although it could have two forms depending on what they decide to do with the storm element hard to say for now um, and then we obviously have Soul Silver Art saying, I believe this is spot on. Um, so this is kind of what he's talking about here. So this is a really, really long theory. So I definitely advise you to go take a look at this if you want. But basically he says, you know, what if, I mean, we need something to cause a storm. So might as well give a special legendary two forms and do the seven rays and 11. I'm not sure how to pronounce this word. Um, but yeah, in one go, still doubting they will do the 11 for now. Since they could just use the seven to trigger the storm to sun form change plot wise. So Again, we know that like Koraiden and Maraiden are most likely going to have five forms each. But this third legendary might only have two forms. Could have five forms as well. Could have no forms. If the third legendary even exists. We don't even know if we're getting one yet. 
um, but I feel like forms are quite a big part of this game because the legendaries are getting a lot of them. Um, so, you know, maybe the different forms are going to have something to do with the gimmick. Most likely will because Riddler Koo said, you know, it's similar to Mega Evolution with like the forms and stuff. So, yeah, it, it seems that, you know, having different forms is a massive part of these games. But yeah, just an idea though, the Sun and the Storm uh, could be different legendaries altogether. So we'll see over time. Uh, after thinking through this, I wouldn't be surprised if the story and gym still followed a certain order, but most of the region was explorable from the start, with highest level Pokemon being unlocked over time like in the wild area and so on. I think Scarlet and Violet will use Celebi plot device, so Karida and Maraida will ride through time and reach the present, while accidentally bring a Pokemon slash person slash object with them. The player will spend most of the game trying to return the person slash Pokemon slash object to their original time. This might even be the reason why Sada and Tora are so interested in the lore of the region and their clothes reflect different time periods. Perhaps they aren't from the present and are trying to find a way to return to the past slash future they came from. Yeah, that's very true. They, they might just not even be like from different points in time. They might generally just like dressing like that. And, and, and that's to do with like the research and stuff, you know, it is very like no one's really even thought about that. Regardless, it's looking more and more obvious that these games would line up well with Johto games. Kanto to Johto have the technology, tradition, contrast as well, and a Let's Go Crystal plus Legend Celebi would fit the Crystal and Time themes perfectly. I think the only significance the Moon could have this generation would be related to the yellowing of the Lunar uh, Consciousness, which symbolizes the transmutation of silver into gold while experiencing the dawning of the solar light as a replacement for the lunar light. That said, wouldn't it make more sense to wait for the Johto games to reference that instead of doing it in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, since they already have the connection to Gold and Silver? I wouldn't expect a lot of Lunar stuff in Scarlet and Violet, really. And then they gave Nimona a green hair stripe and three freckles on each side of her nose for a reason, you know? Makes you question if they would have other rivals uh, when she is connected to green and can wear both uniforms. I would take it as unlikely, unless there's two more rivals, which again, there could be. We've only been introduced to Nimona at the moment, but in the next trailer, we could easily get like two more rivals. If they add another two Regis, they probably will match the past and future theme somehow. A past Regie is very uh, easy to imagine in terms of source material and typing, but a future Regie is a bit harder since we already have electric and steel type Regis. And then the Greeks and Romans knew the Iberian Peninsula uh, as uh, Hesperia Ultima, the last land of the West. Uh, so let's see if there's a character named after the Hesperus genus or references to the uh, like any of these things. Evening, evening stuff feels weird, but Venus is the evening and morning star. And then speaking of that reminder from back in March, was obviously the Crosma and stuff. And also there's all these different like um, Peacock stuff, which again could be the third legendary, etc. So it's just a really, really good thread created by Eduardo. And again, it goes on for a while. Loads and loads of potential stuff we could be seeing in the Generation 9 game. So again, massive shout out to Eduardo for doing all that. That thread goes on for ages. So definitely advise you reading it if you do want um, some really cool knowledge about potential things we might be seeing in the Generation 9 games. Anyway, though. That is going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. It's trying to hit 500 likes. It really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we covered in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. It's everything from me, though. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.